Curves are everywhere. We see them in nature, we see them in physics, and of course, we see them in our animations. And when it comes to animations, curves are the way forward. Curves give movement more natural weight, so they're frequently used because straight linear movements feel janky and weird. But it's not just animations that can be improved by curves. You see, I am a firm believer that if you're struggling to make something feel good or your game's numbers feel off, the fix is probably just an animation curve away. Hi there, I'm Matt and welcome to Game Dev Guide. In this video, we're going to look at some alternative ways that we can use animation curves when developing a game in Unity. Before we get started, I'd like to give a quick shout out to the Game Dev Guide Patreon. If you're a regular viewer and have been enjoying these videos, please do consider becoming a patron by heading over to patreon.com slash gamedevguide or clicking the link in the description below. There's currently three tiers available, starting from just $1 a month, and anyone that signs up gets access to an exclusive Patreon-only channel in the Game Dev Guide Discord. Now let's take a look at one of the fun things we can do with curves. So, the obvious and most conventional use case for an animation curve is to influence the movement of keyframes within an animation. If you've messed around in timeline or recorded animations in the animator, you'll likely be pretty familiar with how animation curves work. As a quick refresh though, here are the common types of animation curve that we might want to use to add a little bit more character to anything we want to move. You see, linear movement is often quite boring and frequently defies the laws of physics. Animation curves allow us to introduce a sense of weight to the things we're trying to move and make the movements feel more realistic. With this in mind, we can consider how an animation curve can be used to introduce a sense of easing to any movement we want to create in our game. I've already spoken in a previous video about how we can control animations using a tweening library, and most tweening libraries will support the use of custom animation curves to control the weight of our coded animations. However, animation curves aren't just for fixed animations. We can also use them to tune more advanced movements. Let's suppose that I'm working on a platformer, and I'd like my character controller to accelerate a bit before reaching their max velocity. Traditionally, we may just use a linear acceleration method where the speed increases by a fixed rate until we hit a max value, but as mentioned before, that's really boring. The alternative most folks might use is to look up some algorithm to create a nice curved movement for acceleration, but then tuning the various values and looking up all the different algorithms on Wolfram Alpha can be pretty time consuming. Instead, we can use animation curves to take away that frustration and have a visual tunable control right inside of the editor. Here, I've added an animation curve called movement curve. In my code, whenever I want to move, I sample the curve with the amount of time the move button has been held down for and use the return value as my speed. The animation curve is currently linear, so it doesn't look any different than before. However, if I start making adjustments here, you can see that my character now accelerates based on the curve and that I can adjust the time it takes for the player to reach maximum velocity. As you can see, mathematical functions that would often take multiple lines of code are much more easily achieved by simply sampling an animation curve. You can use a similar function for speed, gravity, pushback, drag, cornering, and more. In a similar vein, we can use an animation curve to ease out some of our more traditional movements. For instance, remember the camera controller from this video? Well, we can use an animation curve to adjust how our camera moves from point A to point B. We can use the curves to adjust the ease of both the zoom and rotation to make the camera move much more smoothly. And we can more easily experiment with different settings to change how that movement feels. In the previous examples, we focused mostly on types of movements of objects, but we're not limited to using curves just for movement or animation. We really can use them on any kind of value that we'd like to transform. One of the most effective use cases that I've found for animation curves is to transform progression values in a non-linear fashion. Curves are great for managing any kind of stat or number that rely on player progression or experience levels. Let's take a look at what I mean by this. So here I have a class with different variables for a player's stats in my RPG. As they gain experience, I want the player to level up, but I don't want the amount of experience they have to earn to increase linearly per level, because as I've said before, that's boring design and doesn't feel good. Early on, I want the experience required to increase gradually, and then as the player gets further into the game, require more and more experience before leveling up. So we can do this by sampling a curve with the current amount of experience points the player has and determine their current level. I want the maximum level to be 100, so I'll make my first point at zero, and then my second at 100. I'll then set the maximum experience points they need to earn to reach this to 100,000. In my code, I'll pass the player's current level into the graph and retrieve the amount of experience for that level. 
I'll then sample the next level to get the experience they need and subtract their current amount of experience, giving me the remaining amount they'll need to level up. I can then use these values to show their current progress on a progress bar. Let's also build a custom editor class and print each step out in the inspector. We'll iterate through all of our levels, sample the curve, and pop the return value in a label, wrapping it neatly up into a scroll view. In a similar way, we can also adjust the balance of the stats that are influenced by the level. We can make some tabs in our editor to change the currently viewed readout. One of the benefits of building an editor like this and using curves is that it makes balancing stats figures much, much easier. I can make a change to my curve and the editor instantly shows me all of the tiers and their corresponding values. Obviously, some playtesting will need to occur, but I can much more easily eyeball values that I think will work beforehand. And finally, the most literal use of an animation curve is to, well, draw a curve. You see, much like everything else discussed in the video, we can actually plot the coordinates of our curve into a line renderer by sampling it at different points in time, allowing us to draw curves in the editor and get the corresponding curve on screen in our game using the line renderer or in our UI. So these are just a few examples of the alternative ways we can use animation curves. I'm sure there are many more use cases you can think of, so feel free to let me know yours below. That's it for today's video. Before I go, I'd like to give a quick thanks to this video sponsor, Skillshare. As you know by now, Skillshare is an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes to choose from. Skillshare helps you explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. Whether you're interested in improving your storytelling, mastering your artistic talents, or brushing up on your business and marketing, there's tons you can learn and apply back into your game development journey. And because Skillshare is a platform specifically curated for learning, there are no ads and they are always adding new premium classes, so you can stay focused and go wherever your creativity takes you. If you're interested in Skillshare and you want to help support the channel, the first 1,000 of you to click the link in the description below will get access to a one-month free trial of Skillshare's premium membership, allowing you to explore your creativity and check out some of these classes for yourself. If you've enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and let me know your thoughts down below. If you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing as you'll get access to new videos when they go live. Alternatively, if you'd like to see more from me first, you can click the link on screen now to check out another video. As always, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you again next time.